Hi and welcome to WEH Videos. My name is Skip and this is the updated version part 5 on flight planning the navigation log. And we left off last time where we finished calculating our gallons per hour and the amount of fuel used on our first leg here from Calusa to the Williams Vortac. So in the last video I mentioned I was not going to bother with the estimated time of arrival. In order to complete the entire log I think I should go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do here is put time off. So this is going to be, we're going to leave at 1 p.m. exactly. Which means we are going to arrive at 5.23. One o five twenty three. So now let's do the Williams Vortac to the top of climb. And this is going to be a little different than all the rest of the calculations because we don't know where the top of climb is on our chart. But we do know our winds, and we're going to use the same ones as we use for taking off from Calusa. It's going to be 090 at 7 and 20C. And we know that our heading, our true course, is 210. So let's go ahead and figure the rest of this out with the E6B. So for a quick review on the E6B, remember that we had to set our winds and our velocity in the E6B. And we took our winds, 090, and put it underneath the true index. And then we put the grommet on one of the heavy lines here. And then we marked up. 7 to represent our velocity or the wind speed. Then we rotated the dial here to 1, 9, or 5 and that gave us after we moved the little dot down to the 7 a ground speed of 78 knots. So now all we have to do is just rotate the dial here over to 210 our true course and then we just need to move our little dot back up to the 7 because as you can see it changed as we rotated it and now we read a ground speed of 80 knots so let's go ahead and put that in here so now let's go ahead and do the wind correction angle so true index 210 we're at 7 knots so it looks like our little dot here is between four and a half and five. Let's go with the five degree correction. Since it's on the left, we are going to subtract from 210. So that's going to give us a true heading of 205. So let's go ahead and put the rest of the information in here. All right, 210 minus the five degrees for the correction gives us a 205 true heading minus the 14. Remember we got that from the isogonic line and that gives us a magnetic heading of 191 and there's no compass correction so our compass heading is going to be 191 and we're going to put that over here 191 and that'll be our course but there's still more to do here and this is where it gets a little complicated because we do not know the distance to the top of climb. So we're going to have to do some math here, some figuring, to determine just where the top of climb will be. So to figure this out, we need to know the rate of climb. So there are several ways to do this, and probably one of the simplest, it would just be go to your handbook, and you'll find under performance specifications, rate of climb at sea level, 770 feet per minute. So if you did nothing else I suppose that would work but we should go to our rate of climb and here we have different temperatures pressure altitudes and again we're at our 2300 pounds and we could do some calculations like we did before. We also could go over here to time fuel and distance and do some calculations. However what I've learned by watching a few other videos on this because it had me confused was a lot of pilots 
will use what they already know about their airplane. They've been flying the same airplane for 20 years, and when they're climbing out at a certain place, they know exactly what their climb rate is going to be, and they'll use that in this calculation instead of trying to figure out a number from a book. So I did that in X-Plane. I flew this flight a couple of times, and my climb out rate on the average worked out to be 750 feet per minute. So we're going to go with that. Now that we've determined a climb rate, we can do some simple math here to figure our distance. And we're going to do that like this. We're going to take our cruise altitude, 5,500 feet, climb rate of 750, and the ground speed, 80 knots. We're going to take the 5,500 foot cruise altitude, divide that by the feet per minute, and we'll end up with minutes of climb, 7.33 minutes for this climb. So if we have 80 knots per hour and divide that by 60, we're going to end up with 1.33 knots per minute. Now we can multiply 1.33 times the minute of climb, and that's going to give us 9.74 miles to the top of climb. And 7.33 equates to 7 minutes and 20 seconds. So let's go ahead and put our distance in here. We're just going to round this up to 9.75 miles. And we can put our time over here of 7 minutes and 20 seconds. And we can add that time to our estimated time of arrival, 1.12.43. So we're just going to go 1... 12.43. So now let's figure how much fuel are we going to use on this leg. And you could use the calculator. Well, you can use our little computer. And let's start with that. Let's just take one. We want to go to fuel. Fuel burn. And so our duration, our time, is 7.21 minutes. And our gallons per hour, 7.5 it says we're going to use 0.9 gallons of fuel. We can also do this with the E6B. So we're going to put total gallons and time here. So we're going to set gallons per hour over our little triangle here. Gallons per hour, we got 7.5. And our time was 7 minutes and 20 seconds. So let's find 7.20. Here's 7.30, 7.20. Right here, 7.2.9. Obviously, it's not 90 or 900 or 9 even. So, 0.9 there. So, we can write that in right here. 0.9 gallons for this leg. All right, so we've got it all figured out. We know the distance. We know the time. But we don't know where. So, to determine that, we go to our chart. And we get our plotter out. And we find sectional chart. Make sure we're on the sectional chart. Nautical miles. And we're just going to go to Calusa. So let's just go from Calusa and work our way out. Nine miles. Right there. 9.75 miles. Well, look at that. It's right on top of our buckle. So our top of climb is actually going to be our buckle. So now we can determine what we need to do between the top of Klein and our buckle down to Highway 5 and 505 intersection. And this is where things change. We are going to be at our cruise altitude of 5,500, and our true airspeed is going to be 115 knots. So things are going to change a little bit, including our true course along with the change in the winds. So we need to look at the weather chart again. Remember, it was 060 at 10 knots at 3,000 feet, and 100 at 6,000 feet. So we're going to be somewhere in between that at 5,500 feet. So if we cut that in half, we'd end up with a 080. Okay, we could say, well, the winds are out 080, but that's not quite right. We're more between the 080 and 100. So we're just going to take a number 
of 086. I think that's a good number for a heading for the winds. And between the 10 knots and 15 knots, but let's just take 14. So from the top of climb and our buckle, we are going to have winds of 086 at 14 and a temperature of plus 17 degrees. And that's going to be the same all the way down. All right, we have our winds 086 at 14. So you remember the drill. We get our dial set here. We have the true index. We're going to put 086 underneath the true index right there. Then we slide the grommet to one of these heavy lines. Let's just use this one for now, if I can get there. And then we count up 14 to account for our wind speed. And I already put the little dot there, just because it's easier for me to get it there and try to do it at this angle. So what do we do next? Rotate true course under true index. Our true course, 151. One. So, 151. Right there. So there we have 151 underneath the true course. And then what do we do next? Move slider to put wind dot over true air speed. True air speed, 115 knots. So here's 120. So we'll go down to 115. And now we have the true air speed over the 115. And with that, we can calculate our wind correction. So it's on the left, so we're going to subtract, and this is 5, it's between 6 and 7, let's go with 6. We're going to subtract 6 degrees from our 151, and that's going to give us our wind correction angle. And when we look down here on the grommet, it looks like our ground speed is going to be 108. And so we're going to write that down. So let's go ahead and put these figures in. So we have our 151 and we're going to go minus 6 and that gives us a true heading of 145 and we subtract the 14 again again because of the isogonic line there. So that gives us a magnetic heading of 131 with no correction for the compass, so we get a compass heading of 131, and we'll put that over here, and we have a ground speed of 108. So now we're going to do our time. So we're going to do that with our E6B. So what are the instructions? Set miles per hour in knots over the pointer. Ground speed, 108. So we come up here to 108. This is 100, 110. So there's 108. Now we take distance over time. Distance, 13 miles. So we come up here and we find a 13. And we come down here. This is 7. This is 8. Seven and a half, so it looks like seven and a quarter. I'm going to say seven minutes and 15 seconds. So let's go ahead and enter that. Seven minutes, 15 seconds. Estimated time in route. So let's add that to our estimated time of arrival. So we had 12.43 and we had 7.15. We're going to get here at... 1, 19, and 58 seconds. And now we can do the fuel. So it says set gallons per hour, and then we'll have gallons in time over that. All right. So we're going to put our pointer at 7.5 for our gallons per hour. And then we're going to take our time, 7.15. Well, okay. Here's 7, 8, 8.5, 8.15. Wow. Looks like about 
0.9 gallons again. Obviously not 90. So 0.9 gallons. Let's go ahead and write that in. And now we get to do the 505 and Highway 5 intersection down to Watts and then from Watts to the University. But I'm not going to go ahead and do I'm going to fill this out. I think you've seen enough. You know how to fill out this chart by now. So let's go determine the top of descent. Top of descent, it's going to be a lot easier than the top of climb because we can choose a descent rate. So if we know our descent rate, we can calculate distance with just a little math. So because we know our altitude and the altitude we want to get to, we know how much altitude we need to lose. And the altitude we want to get to, of course, is the pattern altitude at SAC Exec, which is 1,023 feet. So let's take a look at the math and just see how this works. So we get our cruise altitude of 5,500 feet, our desired altitude, which is SAC Exec pattern altitude, and altitude to lose, ground speed, and the rate of descent, which I decided should be 650. So we're going to take the 4477 altitude to lose, divide that by the feet per minute at our descent rate, and this gives us a time of 6.88 minutes. We have 101 knots, and we're going to divide that by 60 to come up with knots per minute. Now we take the knots per minute, multiply it by the minutes of descent, and we end up with miles. 10.33 miles is where we should start a descent. And we probably want to start a little bit earlier, just in case the calculations are a little bit off. So let's take a look at the sectional chart and find out where that location is. Where is our top of descent? So here's Sacramento Exec. We're just going to slide out here until we get to 10.33 miles. There's 10, 10.5, 10, right in there. So it looks like our top of descent is right there. And as long as we're here, let's figure out how far we are from University EDU to the top of descent. And that looks like one, two, three and a half, three and a quarter miles. So we have three and a quarter miles from EDU to the top of descent. So let's go ahead and put that on our chart. So university to TOD is going to be 3.25 miles. And from TOD to SAC exec is going to be 10.3. All right, so I went ahead and filled out the whole log here. And we can see when we come down for distance, we have a total of 66.8 miles, a time of 38 minutes and 45 seconds, and we burned 4.82 gallons of fuel. And I'll leave you to determine how much fuel you need to take on this. I would just load up the airplane and go. There's a whole lot of other things in flight planning that you want to know about. This series is more about learning how to make all the calculations using calculators in the E6B and other tools and show you how to make all the calculations. So that's it for this series on the navigation log and learning how to use the tools for filling it out. I hope it helped you in some way. And about helping you in some way, I did write a little app that will help you determine when to start your descent. And There'll be a link in the description below where you can go to download this. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please click the like button. If you have any questions or you want to leave a comment, that would be great. Thanks again for watching, and God bless.